the First Minister for his leadership for decades across the board and personally for his tolerance of my, how shall I put it, politically idiosyncratic moments in this chamber. Uh, I want to say to Jackie Bailey that constitutional uh, change is not academic because when you mention votes for women, that constitutional change was about power. And that's what this debate was all about. Where will power over the major decisions lie? But I want to focus also on something touched on by Jackie Bailey, the demographics of the yes and no vote, where we note, albeit with the caveat of the sample size, that those over 65 voted, according to Lord Ashcraft polls, 73% for no, as opposed to the 55% overall figure, and that's 71% of 16 and 70 year olds for yes. Please let me make some progress. Given that the Scotland's population of the over 55s represents some 36%, and thankfully is growing, the demographic gap and political priorities will widen, not just in Scotland or indeed the UK, but across Europe. Now, I don't think I'm a typical pensioner, whatever that is, mainly because I'm still working full blast, well past retirement age, and have been committed to independence and social justice for decades. But I have a great deal in common with other grannies and granddads out there, and the last thing I want is hostility between the generations because of the outcome of the vote. I would be the first to woman the barricades and halt any move to granny or granddad wars. But I want to address why there's that differential. First, for me, there was access to information. While others tweeted and Facebooked, which I don't do, many pensioners were accessing the debate through the press and the terrestrial media. Now, no one on the no side can possibly dispute the inequality of the debate there. With only one national paper, the Sunday Herald declaring for yes, others had headlines screaming vote yes for higher prices and so on. Nicholas Winchell even had the audacity to tell us the Queen's private thoughts on the debate. BBC impartiality part. But the crux for me was the threat to the state pension either directly by scaring people into believing it would not be paid out or couldn't be paid from Scotland's own resource. And indeed, even any private pension, a contractual matter, was not secured. Now, if you are retired or it is imminent, that's a real whammy of a blow. Incidentally, I know of cases where pensioners were entering the polling station to no campaigners, still telling them they would lose their pension should they vote yes. So I fully understand why the scare stories stuck as they were intended to. Strangely, nearly a quarter of a million pensioners actually claim pension credit in Scotland because the UK state pension is so low. Worse than that, one third entitled to that benefit don't claim neatly sidestepped by the no side. On top of that, some 50,000 Scottish pensioners are already worse off due to Westminster cuts of 90 million to the savings credit. So the battle for independence was so that Scotland could harness its resources for a fairer, more just society for all its people, not just the young and the middle aged, but the old for the pensioners. And for the time being, I'll tell you, I'm waiting for Westminster to deliver that social justice to Scotland's pensioners. The No campaign promised lower energy bills by some £170 pounds per annum. Labour has said it will freeze energy bills. Let's see how that all pans out. Let's see what happens to the winter fuel allowance of £200, currently not means tested. At the same time, those grannies and granddads should think of their grandchildren because Ed Balls is committed to continuing the Tory austerity cuts. Freezing child benefit alone will cost the average family, your children's family, your grandchildren's family, £400 a year worse off. That's the children's society that's saying, so Scotland's pensioners, I simply ask them to watch this space. Promises made in the back of a fag packet, like fag packets everywhere, are easily thrown away. Labour in Scotland has promised that nothing is in or out of consideration for cuts if they governed in this Parliament. Means testing, already a failure with the pension credit. Remember, one third not claiming may be extended to personal care, bus passes, even prescriptions on a Labour agenda. Add to that means testing or even ditching the winter fuel allowance, literally a lifeline to the many pensioners, and that pension will be under greater pressure, making life even tougher for our older people. As for the pronouncements of the self-proclaimed keeper of the promise, I prefer my late mother's dictum when I return from a night out full of jollity. It will be a different story in the morning. And indeed it is, and it has been. Promises, vows, 
I say this to my fellow pensioners, don't count on Westminster. Instead, count what you have in your purse, your wallet in the coming years, once you've paid those bills. And count up whether your grandchildren's prospects for a happy and fulfilling life in, in Scotland improves under Westminster rule. Labour in particular has a lot to answer for. It has saved David Cameron's political skin and aided and abetted the Tories in the No campaign, scaring older people into believing they would be in the breadline when many of them are there already. So far from you, mum's the word. A little bit of calm in a...